Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We have about two minutes before the noon day. I have a recording for uh, Margaret because she is not going to be here. Thank you, Alita. Okay, it is now noon. We'll open with a prayer and then we'll hear the recorded music from our dear sister, Margaret Graham. Father God, it is once again that we, a few of your handmaid servants, have gathered together to study your word. We welcome and we praise your presence as we look into the 12th chapter of Luke. We pray that your spirit will guide us and hover amongst us that we might gain some understanding and be better able to be the servants you've called us to be. We pray your continued blessings on all that, that makes up First Baptist Church and that you will continue to hold us in the hollow of your hand and have mercy on us day by day. We pray this in all prayers in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Olita, whenever you have the music queued up, we'll be listening. Amen. Thank you, Alita, and thank you, Margaret, in absentia for that rendition. Are there any announcements before we get started or get restarted in the 12th chapter of Luke? I sent an email to you, but don't know if you and why we haven't received it yet. Um, there won't be Bible study next Wednesday afternoon um, for Phyllis Walker's sister's funeral will be at First Baptist. And okay, I, I did see that. Thank you, Alita. But thank you for announcing that. So everyone is clear on that. Next Wednesday, we will not be having noonday Bible study be, via this medium because the church will be facilitating the funeral services of one of our dear sister's sister. Okay, last week we began a look at the 12th chapter of Luke. If you would, Alita, could you display the, uh, there we go. And the first topic on there was whom to fear, which we are instructed that we should, that we should fear. And, and who was it that we should fear? 
the Lord. The Lord. And why why is that? We want to recall. What power that only he has that, that should cause us to fear. Anyone? All right, I hear my wife Veronica saying judgment. And that's exactly right. It is only God who has the power to beyond our physical death to send us or assign us to our eternal resting place. And that's either going to be joining Jesus in heaven or where he is or eternal torment where Satan is. And so that's the reason we should fear. And kind of a contradiction, should we therefore live in fear? No. If we Think are true no. Christians, if we are true Christians, and following God and and all the things that we're supposed to be doing, then we should not fear because we, he should judge us in our book to go to heaven. Exactly. And we looked at the scriptures last week in, in, in Luke, and it tells us, it instructs us on in one line to fear. It tells us who we should fear. But then it, it goes on to talk about how if, or it talks about how God cares for the sparrows and the ravens, and that we are so much more valuable than that, that if we align ourselves with God and his teachings, we can live above fear. While being motivated by fear, we don't have to live in fear. If we align ourselves with Jesus and his teaching. So that on the surface or to the uninformed would sound like a contradiction from the scriptures because Jesus himself instructs those who are with in his hearing to fear. He tells us who to fear and why to fear. But then he goes on to say, you don't have to be afraid if you make the right alliance. And he gives examples of that by, or he, an example of that is the hairs on our heads are numbered. So he, can, he is that intimately involved and knowledgeable of us. And if he cares for the sparrows and the, the, the ravens, the way it is described in the scripture, how much more will he care for his own children? Okay. And then it talked that we talked about last week, the unforgivable sin. And what, and what is that? Blasphemy. Okay. Both Veronica and, and Sister Dockery answered that. Blasphemy. Blasphemy, specifically, what kind of blasphemy? Against the Holy Spirit. Against the Holy Spirit. There you go. And and are we dealing with 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 Jesus kind of face to face in this current day? No. Are we dealing with God face to face in this current day? The God who's with us is the Holy Spirit. Okay. So our our daily interactions. And while God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one, we are right now working primarily with the Holy Spirit. And so, what then would be blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? And I, there was, it was mentioned that there were six sins that specifically were outlined in some information that I had. Um, and it talked about not striving with the Holy Spirit or resisting the Holy Spirit, quenching the Holy Spirit, lying or tempting the Holy Spirit. And it gives examples of these throughout the scriptures. Um, the lying and tempting was 
it pointed to the story of Ananiah and Sapphira. I think that's the pronunciation of her name. And their interaction with the priest when uh, the, the followers, the early church had been instructed to sell their possessions and bring the value of it to the priest. And they, a husband and wife who had uh, a great amount of materials, sold what they had, but they conspired amongst themselves not to turn it all over to the priest. And so they came, the husband first, and he told his tale and they questioned him, is this all? And he said it, it was. And, and he was instructed that if you're not telling the truth, you're not lying to me me being the priest, you're lying to the Holy Spirit. He persisted in that tale, and he fell dead. Later, his spouse came with the same story. She, too, was informed that, behold the feet of those who carry out your husband for telling a tale that was not true to the Holy Spirit. She, too, persisted in the tale that they had concocted, and she fell dead. And blasphemy is the unforgivable sin. And the long story, or, or the short story of blasphemy is, it is persisting in a lifestyle and a belief or a disbelief in the powers of the Holy Spirit, or even the existence of such. And so when you are in that state, you are cut off from God by your own choice. And he turns you over to the powers of those that you have decided to follow. And in that state, one does not think or one is, is not moved to ask to repent and be forgiven. Because did not God also promise that he would forgive us anything we repented of sincerely? Class? Did yes. he not say that? Yes, he did. So the only time we are not forgiven is when we don't repent. And the only time that we are never moved to repent, we are so caught up in our beliefs of self-righteousness or just convinced that there is no God, there is no Holy Spirit. There is no afterlife. There is no judgment I have to face. And unfortunately, we have people who go around calling themselves atheists, who practice a disbelief in God. I would think that they would might be prime candidates for eternal damnation if they persist in that lifestyle and in that belief. So what's and we we can be assured that we are not or the the assurance that we are not living a blasphemous life is that if you are ever urged by the Holy Spirit to repent or you feel guilty for things you've done that you know are contradictory to God's teachings to Jesus's teachings and his examples then you can feel somewhat assured that you are not in that category of a blasphemer against the Holy Spirit. Because the evidence of that is that you are never moved to repent or seek forgiveness. Okay, the next topic we looked at was um, the parable of the rich fool. And real quick, that was a man had planted and had reaped the a, a bountiful harvest. And what ought, what ought we do when we, are, when we are so rich or when we are blessed by God? What should we be looking to do? Bless others. Bless others. Exactly. Bless others. Because God is not, while he certainly has the, the hairs on each of our heads are numbered, so he is intimately familiar with us on an individual basis. He is God of all, and he, he seeks to bless everybody. And so we, being his followers, ought to have the same mindset. 
So when we find ourselves on the end of a windfall of profits that are more that are more than sufficient for us to survive, we ought not be looking to hoard them and stack them up for the sake of stacking them up. We ought to be looking to share that blessing. Do I get it? Do I get an amen on that? Amen. Amen. Yes. So, so how then is the world which is which is rich beyond imagination? Why do we have so many poor and struggling people who are doing going without the basic necessities of of physical life? Because of greed in this country, for sure. Um, That's exactly right. And again, it doesn't always have to be on such a grand scale. And oftentimes we can be lured into a false sense of security because we are not Bill Gates or Elon Musk or... Jeff Bezos, because we don't have millions and billions to fuss over, we think that we're doing just fine because we are middle class or upper middle class or, or in poverty or whatever the case might be. But we all have more than enough, do we not? Yes. And do, do we willingly give? Do we willingly share? Do we happily do those things? And that is a challenge question for, for our lives. Okay. What was the end of the of the 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 story of the of the rich fool, the parable of the rich fool? He told them that he God told him that he would die. That's right. He at, at the moment he or at the time that he was had done an accounting of his possessions, he made a decision that, you know what, I've done so well, I can now just about cease from laboring and kick back and be merry. And what was the what was the line from God to him? Who tonight you die. <laughs> That is so powerful. A simple story, but a very powerful one, which is, I'm sure, exactly why Jesus shared it with those who were listening. That you might think, because of what you have accumulated, you have, you have achieved security, but outside of a relationship with God, there is absolutely no security. Because the one thing that is absolutely true, we are all going to die physically. This body, we're going to have to lay it down one day. And the other thing that's true is our souls will live for eternity. And that is determined by how you spend your physical life, where your soul will spend eternity. And so we all have to make a decision. Do we dare trade the short life for the long life? The short life being this physical existence that we that God has blessed us with. The long life is when we lay this temporary facility down and then begin transition to eternity. And there's nothing that brings that, for me anyway, that brings that more home than when you attend a funeral because you see right in front of you how short, no matter how long we live, how short this life is. And so we need to be mindful, not, necess not fearful, but we need to be very mindful of that there is an eternity and our soul will, will live consciously for eternity. Okay. 
So how ought we spend this short life then? This natural life, this physical life. We need to fill our life with God. And not right. We need to, I'm sorry, go ahead. We should fill our life with God as opposed to filling our life with self. That's exactly right. And God tells us that the body is more than what you put in it or what you put on it. So don't 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 get it twisted in today's vernacular. And that 20th verse in the 12th chapter of Luke says, but God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So there you go. You can people die every day with with their 401ks, maybe at peak value, but when they lay down that body, who's gonna enjoy the the value of that 401k or those savings? And that brings us, I think, to where we left off last week at the 22nd verse of Luke chapter 12. So if someone would, please read verses 22 through 30. Are there, uh, before we do that, are there any questions or any comments on, on the first 21 chapters of Luke, of the 12th chapter of Luke? Okay, if someone would, please take verses 22 through 30. And this is the care and anxiety. This is the English Standard Version, uh, verse 22. And he said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And if you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, and do not seek what you are to eat or what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. All right. That's good stuff right there. Them shouting words, as some would say. <laughs> So for all that we do, and I'm, we have anecdotes and, and examples that, yeah, if you make more money, you can live a better life because you can afford um, health care and all these other things. But does any of that add one moment to your lifespan? No. But do do we... Do we believe that? Because I tell you, there's a whole lot of worrying that goes on and a whole lot of industries making millions, if not billions, off of the anxiety of mankind. 
because we worry about how much we weigh, uh, what we look like, our fashion, are they up to date? And I'm not just talking about the secular world. So we, without a doubt, have, have work to do. And there's no doubt about that, but that's what ought to keep us praying to God and thanking him for his mercy day after day. Because if you, if we, like the scripture just instructed us to do, if we just took a look, just stand on your front porch or look out your window and just look around at what happens without you lifting a hand. Amen. Trees, trees blooming, sun shining, bees buzzing, grass growing, mm -hmm. weeds too. <laughs> and like, like the scripture says, they neither toil nor have storehouses or barns or, or any of that kind of stuff. But spring comes around and the trees bud and then there's leaves and then the flowers bloom and the grass grows and, and squirrels run around and find nuts that they've buried or just keep looking till they find them and there never seems to be a shortage. But we, on the other hand, engage in all manner of, I dare say, depraved behavior to mm -hmm. satisfy those same basic needs. And the scripture tells us that all over the world, that's the way people are behaving. Mm -hmm. And then it, it tells us, but your father knows what you have need of. That's mm -hmm. true. And so you don't have to go out and, and do all of that stuff to try to meet the needs that your father has already said, I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could it really be that simple? Hmm. Well, Deacon Davis, I think sometimes we need to turn off some things because media and marketing are constantly bombarding with us at, with advertisements that we need certain products and we don't have enough. Mm -hmm. So I find it's best to turn off television and even our cell phones and social media so that we don't buy into that garbage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that's that's so true. But even even if we manage to live a hermit's life and just closed ourselves in, would that be enough? No. Okay. We've, there, there's a, a, a parable that uh, Jesus tells of a, of a man that was possessed of a spirit, and that spirit was driven out of him. And so then his mind was, was free, was clear. But because he didn't fill it with the right stuff, Another spirit came in and brought with him other evil spirits, and the man or the person wound up worse than they started. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough just to get rid of the evil thoughts or the evil influences. We need to make sure that we're, we're filled up with good thoughts and good behavior. And that's the challenge. But Deacon Tom, Deacon David, uh -huh. I was, this was brought to, to my mind just for this whole chapter. Uh, an old adage I remember hearing, only what you do for Christ will last. And that, that is so true. It tells us, I think we, we get to it somewhere in here where it says that anything other than than what you just said, other than what you do for Christ, it's gonna it's gonna waste away. Yep. Just like these bodies, you can spend countless hours toiling in the gym, on the treadmill, on the stationary bike with free weights, drinking diet drinks and shakes and smoothies and all this stuff. But when God Cause your body, it can be in the, the peak condition. But when your time's up, 
Yes, it sir. doesn't matter. Doesn't make any difference. Yes, sir. And again, that's the parable of that that rich fool. Mm -hmm. He had done. He had reached the the pinnacle of of husbandry of farming, where he had planted and his soil was so rich that it yielded him a crop. Where he felt like this is it. I can kick back now. I'm good. But the instruction from the Lord was, this night, your soul is required of you. Now, all that you've done, it has not delayed this final hour by one second. So what was it worth? Or who's it going to benefit? Deacon Davis, we spend so much time on foolishness. Things that when that day comes, the stuff that we spend time doing, that's not what God is going to be asking us on that day. Mm -hmm. And we that spend is so too much true. time. This is in the church, outside of the church. Mm -hmm. We spend too much time on foolishness. And we keep singing that song, I want to be more and more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when we look at how we treat each other, yes. we, are so, we are so far away from what God is asking us. We mm -hmm. spend time on stuff that does not make any sense. And he is not pleased. And when we start, when we reflect on what you just said, Sister Han, when we truly reflect on that, that's when we come into that fear that Jesus was talking about. That's what you need to be worried about. When you've done all this stuff of your own designs, all of that's going to be gone. Yeah. And then what do you have left? Nothing yeah. but the judgment. And if you haven't secured your relationship with God through belief in his son, Jesus, our Christ, Mm -hmm. You're headed for eternity in hell. That's true. No matter what good you think you did, you provided for your children, for your relatives, for your friends. You threw the best parties. You were the toast of the town. You were dressed to the nines every time you stepped out of your house. Mm. But at the end of the day, that has that accounts for nothing with God. Nothing. Because he's sitting there telling you from day one, I've already done all of that for you. Mm -hmm. And you spent your life basically trying to redo what I had already done. You had it from all you had to do was follow me and it was already provided. It would have been like the disciples. And this is this is Tommy completely. Yeah, yeah, Lord, I'll follow you, but I'm going to need a trailer to bring my ship with just in case this doesn't work out. I can go back to fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we try to do. Yeah. So how many boat docks are there in the parking lot at First Baptist? Because <laughs> we bring our own security with us, even though we're coming there to praise a God who has already assured us mm -hmm. that he has everything that we need right that's, and true. Cool. that's true we're playing church and that gets us to uh, another where he talks about it is more difficult for a rich man to get into heaven mm -hmm. than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle mm -hmm. because we've got so much stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in our heads mm -hmm. in our hearts mm -hmm. in our hands in our pockets, in our bank accounts, in our careers, that there's no room for God. Mm -hmm. That's true. And so it is, it is a sobering reality when we look at it through that lens. And to say something that's completely obvious, but we, we say it all the time. Well, we're just human. Who knows that more than we do? 
God knows that. So that can't be an excuse to God. Well, God, you know we're only human. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I made you. I know who you are. Mm-hmm. That's true. The very heads on your head are numbered. Mm-hmm. And I numbered them. I know them. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I've already provided everything you ever could have imagined you needed. And all the stuff you want, that's not me putting that in your head. Mm-hmm. So if it's not God putting it in your head, who's putting it in your head? The world, Satan. They go straight to the to the top of that tree. It's Satan. It's Satan. Mm-hmm. If we boil it down, there's only two. Either God or, or Satan. Satan. Yep. Uh-huh. Man. We try to create a whole lot of gray area, but there is no gray area. None. When Moses told those people, choose a side. There wasn't a middle. You either come over here and you're going to follow God's teachings or you stay over there with that golden calf you built and then we'll, we'll have a reckoning. There was no middle ground. There is no middle ground today. But we keep seeking it and we keep trying to build it on cliches and and political parties and everything else that we can imagine. We try to throw that in the mix. And all it does is distract us from what we ought to be doing. What were you doing? (laughs) And what was that? Um, Uh, Brother Deacon. Uh huh. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, we make the mistake of believing that what's ours is ours. Mm-hmm. And God, scripture says, God is the one who gives the power to gain wealth. So God doesn't have a problem with wealth, but he does have a problem with our hearts. That's right. Yeah. Um, so even if you look globally, And that's what verse 30 is talking about when it says all the nations of the world seek after these things. Uh Your your father knows that you need them. So even globally, when you see nations looking at other nations, wanting to have what they have and go take it. Mm -hmm. um, And then for those who rig their elections so that they're reelected every every time they're elected you know it's just wanting to hang on to power wanting to wanting to take what what god has given somebody else all of those things god says i know what you need uh-huh. but you're you're grabbing after what either somebody else has or you're grasping after wealth you want power and you're rigging the system to gain it it's like Mrs. Hines said, all of this is ridiculous because in the end, Putin is not going to be here forever. That's right. Trump is not going to be here forever. We're not going to be here forever. Right. So we have to make a decision. Are we going to trust God uh-huh. or uh-huh. are we going to continue to trust in ourselves? And I mm-hmm. think ourselves are going to miss the boat totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt, amen to everything you just said, Wyreen. Mm-hmm. That is so. That is so true. And if you just this, I would I would say at least <laughs> eighty five, if not ninety five percent of everything that we engage in is about worthless yeah. when you look at it through this lens of the scripture. Because again, we say we're working because, or we, we do things because we need them, we need them, we need them. Well, the only reason you, the only way you can say that is if you're not relying on God. Because for sure, 
God has not lied to us when he said he has he provides everything we need. So we've got to be careful when we when we talk about I'm going for this because I need this. I need how are you, how are we still in need if God has said on more than one occasion, but he only needs to say it one time and it's true forever that he has provided all that we need. Mm -hmm. We we sing that song, All I Have Needed, Thy Hand Has Provided. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great is thy faithfulness brought unto us. Mm -hmm. But then we turn around and, and we go and we connive and we scheme to get what we we Thank have to um, Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying we get to get what we think we want. You work all those long hours. And society says, you know, you need to progress in your career. So you force yourself to, to work extremely hard and make sacrifices that you shouldn't, like, you know, your family, your loved ones, your health, and you think you need it. And that's why you hear so often of people who, when they achieve that ultimate goal, they thought they wanted, they're not fulfilled and they're not happy because they really did not, and I'm speaking about myself. Now I find myself asking God, is this what you really want me to do? Is this is this the purpose you had in store for me and not what I think I want to do or do it because nobody else wants to do it kind of mind frame? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. You know, it reminds me of a statement that one of my daughters made. You know, and you're young, you're working, you're climbing the ladder, and it's all about the job and making more money, the mm -hmm. job and making more money. She said, but as she has lived, she has realized one thing. She said, money cannot buy the one thing that she has found. She said, you can't buy peace of mind. Right, right. She said, you can make all the money you want. She said, mm -hmm. but if you don't have peace of mind, she mm -hmm. said, you're lost. Yep. That is so true. Yep. That is absolutely true. I mean, when when the stock market crashes or whatever, it's it's not the persons that don't have anything that's that's stressing and losing mm -hmm. hair and losing sleep. It's the people that think they have something and they that's see true. that's true. They see their 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 account balances going down and they start sweating and, and mm -hmm. panicking and yeah. doing all kinds of things. Well, what are you worried about it for? Yeah. Yesterday, it was just a number on a page. Today, it's still just a number on the page. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The sun came up yesterday, and it came up today. Yes, it did. And it didn't matter what the stock market was doing. But it's, it's easier to say than to do. Anything else on 22 to 30? But that was the body is more than clothing, is more than what you eat. And Solomon in all his glory wasn't arrayed as beautifully as the lilies of the field. Mm -hmm. You know, Deacon, going back to what uh, Cassandra was mentioning about working and even Mrs. Himes' daughter, you know, I walk through my house now and I'm trying to look at what I can get rid of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I mean, my vacuum cleaner has been sitting in the middle of the floor for all week. The dustpan is in the middle of the table. Uh, you know, I, I could write my name in the dust that has accumulated. So this stuff is just stuff. It's just stuff. Right. right. And, you know, after a while, it gets on your nerves. <laughs> and that, and that, you, you're so, you're exactly right. Because none of this, like it says, the scripture says, these things, Paul, when he, he sat there and he gave his resume, he talked about all that he had accomplished and all that, all the degrees he had. And he was a Roman citizen. He was a Jew amongst Jews. He was this, that, and the other. And he said he counted it all as 
dung. Yeah. All this is worthless. If you don't have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. the proper relationship with God, mm -hmm. you don't have anything. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because in just a few days, everything we've ever seen, mm -hmm. everything we've ever touched, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. we've ever cared about other than God is going to be gone. Okay. Yes. And if you don't have God, you're going to lose your mind. Yes. And that's where you talked about it yourself. You Or it was just said that for all the money you make, mm -hmm. you go home at night and you probably get the bigger your accounts get, probably the bigger the headaches you have trying to go to sleep. That's true. But if you unloaded all the stuff and all the anxiety and stress that goes with the stuff, you could lay down, you could stand up and go to sleep peacefully. Mm -hmm. And something that is repeated and it, it kind of rubs me a certain way. Where we talk it is often said that it's, it's hard to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. God, didn't God tell us that my burden, my yoke is easy, my burden is light? Mm -hmm. So how do we come back and say it's hard to be a Christian? Uh. Uh, somebody help me on that. But how do we how do we say that? How how do we make that true? Because we're we're strange. We're really we start thinking about what we was supposedly we can't have or do without. While God has told us in His Word, don't you worry about those things, and all of those things are insignificant, but. Being man, we want what, and the, and the scripture even tell us that we shouldn't covet what anybody else has. And for the most part, nobody does, but they start thinking about, well, the wor world says I should be at this level. And when I get to this age, I should be married. And I should have children. I should have a home. And the list goes on and on and on. But is that what God wants for you? That's what you have to come back to and say, well, that's, that's not God's plan for me. And it may be something else he has in order for me. And if he doesn't want me to have all those things, I'm still in good shape. You know, it's like when we, when Wyreen was talking about Putin and Trump and all of them scaring people into thinking that, you know, oh, the world's going to be in a big mess if he's not president and if Putin come over here and this, that, and the other. And she just plainly said, they're not going to live forever. And whatever legacy or whatever he's trying to uh, build for himself is going to waste away anyway, because nobody's going to remember that. And we as a culture of people have learned to survive on little or nothing. I hear Lots of stories from my mother about her growing up as a child and what things they didn't have, but they were happy and they made do with what, what they had. Is it a need? Is it a want? Is it necessary, the things we look at? And I was thinking about sometimes you go, you, you often get things because, again, society and media says, Oh, this item's on sale, you know, and you, you've you been looking at it and looking at it and you say, oh, I want that. And I know I can be guilty of buying things. I've already got enough. When you say God will supply all our needs. And when we were having our um, campaign, we we said the scripture we, we held on to was that more than enough. He gives us more than enough. And I look mm -hmm. at people on TV who have said, I'm tired of the noise. I'm going to go live off the grid. And they find some land in the middle of the woods of Wyoming and start figuring out how to 
hunt or fish or grow their own food. And they say, that's all I want to do is to be happy and not feel that I am overburdened with what the world says I should have and what I should do and where I should be. It's all, like you said, it's all about giving your all to God, focusing on him and knowing that he's going to take care of us. Okay, I'm through on my soapbox. <laughs> No, that's a that's a good that's a good soapbox to be on <laughs> because it was nothing but the truth. I was I was sitting here thinking uh, a minute ago we were talking about um well basically what we we're talking about here and I was thinking about Chick Fil A. Here's a multi million perhaps billion dollar corporation, and yet. They close on Sundays. Yes. But we have church members that says, I can't come to church on Sundays because I, I have to work. Well, my job schedule doesn't permit me to be a part of the, uh, a percentage of the church services. Is that a little cockeyed or, or backward? How is it a corporation that I, I can't vouch for that owner's Christianity or his purity of heart? Deacon David? Uh-huh. You know, this whole conversation just it, it reminds me of uh, I was looking for that scripture in Ecclesiastes 1.14 um, this says, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. It's like, again, that whole conversation, that whole idea of what Miss Han said is foolishness. It is, and and it's it's <laughs> it's it's straight. It is straight from Satan. Mm. That we, despite what God has told us, right here, we just read it in, in Luke, where he talks about how his care for the, for the fowls of the air, that he provides for them everything they need. How much more valuable are you than they? But yet we let the world convince us that we are not enough with God, that we got to go buy the latest jeans or the latest sneakers or the fanciest house or the electric vehicle or whatever the case, whatever we're striving to, to acquire material. We have let the world tell us that we with God is not enough. And we, we accept it. And that takes us back to, to that blasphemy that if you're not careful, you will become so absorbed into that that you forget that God has told me he provides all my needs. And I'm telling him, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, Holy Spirit, that you and Jesus and God is enough. I've got to go do make a way on my own. That kind of lifestyle, that kind of living, that, in my estimation, approaches blasphemy. Because it is a lifestyle that's denying God, denying the Holy Spirit. That I have all you need, but yet you spend all of most of your time trying to get what you say you need. Okay. Brother Deacon, going back to your original question about Christianity being hard. Uh -huh. I think where it's hard is when you go back to Matthew 25, when it talks about visiting the sick and caring for the, the naked and the hungry. Those are the things that Christ said, if you do those for the least of these, you've done them unto me. Uh -huh. and I think that's where we fall short. We When we have not visited, when we've not taken care of, when we've not seen to, when we've 
we've neg neglected what Matthew 25 says, uh, in as much as you have done these things. That's mm -hmm. where it gets hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because it's a daily battle between spirit, spirituality, being spiritual and fighting Satan. It's all day, every day that sometimes make it feel like it's difficult because it is a fight. I mean, Satan comes at you. The more you try to trust in God, the more Satan finds ways to try to come at you. So it's a constant battle from fighting those two spirits. And that... Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I just was going to add to that, that the book that the senior ministry has been reading by Tony Evans, Victory Over uh, the Spiritual Battle, just points to that fact that we've already won the victory when, G when Jesus died on the cross and was, and was raised. So we don't have to worry about how we're going to fight Satan, but just be mindful that God has given us an armor in Ephesians. He said, put on the whole armor of God. He's, he's talking about your right thinking and making sure that you rely, like we've been talking today, rely on the Holy Spirit and its wisdom and its guidance to keep us from falling short and fulfilling like, you know, um, you know what that play a long time ago, your arms are too short to box with God. You can't uh -huh. you can't fight Satan in uh, in the way that we think we can because it's a spiritual battle and and it's ongoing and we just have to remember that the one who has given us victory has already won the battle for us and we just need to remember that and to keep our minds focused on the Holy Spirit when things come our way. Cause I, I can only speak for myself that after I had a stroke and they eliminated my job, I thought, well, God is in control and he's going, he's going to take care of us. And he has, and I have not gone without anything, probably have had too much. And that it keeps me thinking I need to be continually ask God to help me to be a good steward over what he has given me thus far. And that, that's, that's exactly right. And it, it, like the example I use where the, the person was cleansed of a spirit, but they didn't fill that empty space with goodness, with God. And so it left space for more evil spirits to come in and a person winds up worse than they were before. Mm -hmm. The sad truth is we often, we being mankind, don't trust God until we have no other choice. That's right. Instead of making God our first choice, mm -hmm. we wait until everything we've tried has failed and failed miserably, maybe failed miserably three or four times, before we trust God. Amen. And that's that's the difficult part, is choosing God first. It's and then God. once you choose God, we have to strive mm -hmm. to fill our lives with God. Yes. Because Satan, if he never told any, if he only told one truth, it was when he testified to God that he's going to and fro seeking whom he can devour. Yep. yep. And, he, and he never stops 24 7, mm -hmm. 365. Yeah. He is on his job. That's right. But even, in, even with that being the battle lines, and those are the battle lines, Jesus showed us when he was in the will well, throughout his life, but in particular, when he was in the wilderness those 40 days, Satan came at him. Mm -hmm. And how did he? He didn't come up with newfangled concoction. <laughs> he used the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to use. That's because true. we have we have no other 
weapons. We have no other protection. We have no other tool mm -hmm. to do battle with Satan that other than God. the word of God. That's true. And so when we find ourselves being stressed by all the stressors that are in this world, we need to find in the scriptures, how do I deal with my employer who insists I have to work every Sunday and I have to put God on a back show? How do I deal with that? And the answer is in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so it's not hard. You just have to make up your mind that that's what you want to do, that I want to be a follower of God. Everything else will fall into place. It will. And Deacon we have, Thomas, Yes. I'm sorry. I think you're right. I think the last three verses of that chapter summarizes it all. But seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. There you go. And you turn on the news and you see the chaos, the anxiety, the stress, the breaking news, the banners. That's the that's the shape we find our our, our minds and our, our soul because we are so tied to all that stuff that's of the world. And he tells us right here, this isn't a book that came out yesterday or mm -hmm. on Times bestseller today. Mm -hmm. This book has been around for as long as any of us and will be around long after all of us. That's true. But we won't turn to this one first. We'll look for some pop psychology or, or some new fad to latch on to, to find happiness and joy and peace of mind. Jesus tells us in, in his, or God tells us in his word, I will give you a peace that passes all understanding. Yep. But we don't believe it. That's why we're stressed. That's why we're popping pills left and right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, the Satan, like capitalism, it's all about its business every day, all day long. Mm -hmm. All about the dollar. Yeah. And they'll sell you anything. They'll tell you anything. They'll convince you of anything as long as you hand over the money. Hmm. We are at one o'clock and we still didn't completely finish chapter 12, but I thank God for all of you and your contributions to this discussion and review of another third of the 12th chapter of Luke. And we'll finish it for sure in two weeks. Okay. <laughs> Anybody have anything to, they want to add or say before we close? That was good. Thank you for the lesson today. Thank yes. You. Thank yes. you all for the lesson today. Very insightful and encouraging. It, because it's, it's really simple. It's simple. You just have to you just have to be committed. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. That you had a the TV commercials look good. They make those things look good, but that's their job is to make them look good. But like the scripture said, for all your worry, uh -huh. and you add one cubit to your stature. Sure mm -hmm. does it. If all minds are clear, we'll go ahead and dismiss. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for yet another day and an opportunity to study your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your son, our savior. And we thank you, Lord, just for, for life itself. Please, God, continue to bless us and grant us mercies as we continually work out our soul's salvation. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we know that you love us and we love you. Yes. We pray 
your blessings upon First Baptist Church and this group that gets together to study your word and all those groups that get together to study your word. We pray, God, that in the end, we will be what you've called us to be and you will welcome us into the kingdom. We pray this in your son Jesus' name and say amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. See you in two weeks. All right. Have, have a good week.